Hello, Nicholas G from Cloud Ready Solutions here. I just wanted to do a very short introduction about this video. Um, what I'm doing in this video is, is protecting a Gallagher Command Center. Now, Gallagher Command Center is um, typically a, a mission critical server that is responsible for um, access control. So if you, if you think, for example, if you have a security swipe that get, gets you access to um, a corporate building or, or various rooms within that organization, that could be managed and monitored by a Gallagher command center. Obviously, if that uh, individual server is, is lost for whatever reason, then um, there could be issues regarding to security. What I'm doing is using Arc Server Replication and High Availability, which is a component of Arc Server UDP, uh, to protect the um, Gallagher command center to a secondary server. Now this could be a secondary server located in the same building or at a remote site. Um, so this is actually quite a complex video. I'm actually um, protecting using a methodology called um, protecting a custom application where I'm going to be protecting for, first of all the SQL database but also um, some of the additional services associated with the application. So it's quite a, a long complex uh, technical video. Um, I just wanted to give a short introduction. It's not for everyone but uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you. Now I'm going to go through the configuration and protection of Gallagher um, Command Center. What I have here is two Windows servers. They happen to be Hyper-V virtual machines, but they could be running on any other platform. Um, they could be physical servers or they could be virtual machines. Uh, these happen to be Hyper-V VMs and they happen to be located on the same network. Uh, but again, they could be on separate uh, subnets so long as they can be connected via IP. You can see the server on the left is I've named uh, Gallagher 1 and the server on the right I've named Gallagher 2. Uh, we can see the IP addresses um, ending in 241 and ending in 242. Before I start, I'm just going to turn off the Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration so I don't forget about that later on. I'll do that on both servers. Now, I've already copied the um, uh, Gallagher install files to the desktop of both servers. Um, and I'm going to start the install on the the first server, the primary server that I've called uh, Gallagher 1. So I'll just basically follow the uh, the wizard and then I will skip the video while the process completes. But what I'm actually going to select is the server components. I'm going to choose to install, uh, I'm just going to change the C drive to E drive for my installation path. Um, and I'll browse for my license location, which is actually in here. Uh, it is a clean Windows server, so this is going to install a new instance of SQL Server Express. And for this primary server, I'm just going to choose one of the templates just to give me some, um, some data to protect. Uh, I'm going to use the default settings. Now I have the option of, of exporting and saving the database recovery code and it's very important I do this on the first server. So I'm actually going to export it to um, the E drive on this server into a folder I'm going to call backups. Okay, so I've saved that and we'll, we will be using that later on. So save the file and I can acknowledge that I've saved that file and I'll click next and I'll get prompted that SQL Server 2014 Express will be installed. And I'll pause the video now just to let that complete. Okay, the installation has completed on the primary server. Uh, so I'll just uh, click finish 
and just go through the next step. First thing I want to do is run the configuration client. It's a fresh installation. So I'm prompted to specify a new password. The first thing I'm going to do is take a backup. And the location is going to be the E drive backups folder. I'll start the backup. OK, backup is successful. Now jumping it across to my second server, the DR server. I'm going to first of all copy the uh, backup folder across. So there's my backups folder. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it onto the E drive. Now what I actually want to do is install the same product in exactly the same way on the secondary server. And by exactly the same way, I also mean we need to have the same server name. So as these servers are on the same network, I'm just going to disable the network card on this uh, secondary server so I don't get a conflict and I'm able to rename. So I've disabled the network card and then I'm going to change my computer name to be the same as the primary server. And that will require a reboot. OK, the server has now rebooted and you can see that it has the same computer name as the primary server, Gallagher One. The network card is still disabled to prevent the uh, conflict and now I can go through the installation again I'm going to choose my serv server components and choose that I want to use the E drive as previously and I can specify my license file. Oh. So I just need to correct the uh, install path there. Again, I'm going to install a new SQL instance. On this server, I don't need to install any, any templates. Um, we're ultimately going to be bringing things across from the primary server anyway. And again, the database recovery code, I don't really need to export this one. I'm not going to use it. So I'm just going to say, I have taken a copy of it and continue. And again, the installation is going to take quite a while. So I'll skip this part of the recording. OK, the installation has uh, finished. So I'll just click finish. And the first thing I actually want to do is restore the backup that we took earlier. So if I go into my um, Galaga folder and choose my command center restore, I can select my restore file, which is on the e, on the E drive. In the 
backups folder. Uh, that's it. It's strange it doesn't have a name, but that's the file. And I click start. And now it asks for the recovery code, which I can import again from the same location. Restore is completed. Do I want to restart? I'll just say yes. So basically what we have now is, is two servers with the same name, with the same install, with the same database, same um, encryption. What I want to do now is actually rename my server back. So I'm going to rename it back to be Gallagher number two which of course will require a reboot. Okay, the, the, the secondary server has rebooted, it is now called Gallagher 2. Now, uh, if I was to run um, these configuration tools, you'll see I can't connect because it's trying to connect to Gallagher 1. Now, if I reconnect my network card, Now I should be able to um, run these client tools on the secondary server and have them connect to the um, the primary server. Uh, log in. Yep, I can see I'm connected. Um, straight away. Now, um, I can also run my uh, command center. Okay, I am now ready to install ArcServe replication and high availability. I'm going to install it, um, the, the, the management console on the, the DR server, which is Gallagher 2 in this case. So I have my uh, uh, ISO image mounted and I'm just going to run the setup program. Choose install components. And I'm going to choose to install the ArcServe RHA control service. I'll just follow the uh, the uh, wizard to just do a a default installation. I'm happy to install on the C drive, and I'm really just going to click next, next until we we get to install. It's going to launch the ArcServe RHA overview page and log in using my uh, local credentials. From the overview page, I can launch the scenario management tool. Once we have the arcs of RHA manager open, we can create a new scenario. So I'm just going to go through the um, basic configuration of how to protect the uh, Gallagher command center. And go through the, the create new scenario wizard. It is possible to create scenarios and create templates, which makes um, creating additional scenarios very simple. 
Um, it's also possible to export a, uh, a scenario so that can be easily imported in the future. But for this um, single scenario kind of um, solution, we can really just go through the configuration with a wizard and make all the changes the one time. Now, the uh, Gallagher Command Center uh, uses SQL Server. So we do have a couple of options that we could use to protect SQL Server. There are numerous ways we could protect the server. We do, of course, have a full system protection option, which will actually cr protect the entire server to a virtual machine running on either VMware, Hyper-V, or Amazon EC2. Um, however, we're here looking in an isolated environment. We're, look we're looking at two um, potentially physical boxes that uh, you know, they don't have a hypervisor, they don't have domains, they don't have any um, DNS or any other connectivity to the outside world. So this need to be a self-contained uh, protection solution. So we could protect, like I say, full, using full system, or we could um, consider the Gallagher Command Center as a custom application and actually go through the process of deciding which bits of data to protect um, from the source to the target. Um, but what I prefer to do in this case is actually protect as a SQL server, and then we'll make a couple of small changes to that scenario um, when it's complete before running. So I'm going to select SQL server as my server type, and I'm going to choose high availability. Now, the difference between replication and data recovery scenario, or DR, and high availability is that the, the DR scenario is really about replicating the data and yes, you can, in some way, recover the data and get the, the uh, get the data back if you want to um, in the future. The high availability scenario allows you to replicate the data and actually fail over to that copy of the data, so that you don't need to bring the data back in any way. We can actually automate the fail over to the remote site. Um, also, we've got an option of in uh, integrity testing for assured recovery, which that basically means we are able to. Um, Bring up the services on the on the replica server on the dr server so we can run tests that um, we have a, a functioning system you know so we can see that sql server is running and we can see the data is mounted in sql server etc i'm going to select both those two options we do have the option to integrate with arcs backup but we're not using that in this scenario um, the default scenario name for a sql server is sql so i'm just going to change this to be um, Galaga, Galaga CC, and my master host name is the, the production server, the, the live um, uh, server, which is Galaga, Galaga One. In this case, and my replica is Galaga Two, Galaga Two, simple. Um, this checkbox here that is selected is going to allow us to verify that the RHA engine is installed on both hosts, which it isn't in this case, because they're both you know, relatively clean servers. Um, so when we click next, we'll get the chance to install the agent. Uh, also, you notice the TCP port is port 25,000. It is possible to change that at this point. So we're now going to verify if the engine is installed at any of these servers, and we can see the server status is not installed. Now it's very simple for us to just click the install button and then we can choose do we want to use local system account or a named account and i'm just going to use the local system account for these so it doesn't take long to actually install the agent it's usually just a matter of seconds Just about to see the status is installing. Okay, you can see a Gallagher 2 is now installed. That's actually the local machine that we're running the console on. And we're installed now on Gallagher 1 as well. Notice there's no reboot required to install the agent, so it's fairly uh, non-disruptive. So let's continue the wizard. Now this is an interesting um, um, 
thing we discover when we are protecting the Gallagher install, namely the, the SQL server that is installed by default does not have TCP IP enabled. And that is actually a requirement that we need in order to protect it. So what I need to do is make small change to both SQL servers. So I'll quickly make the change on the, uh, the DR server first. So I'm just gonna go into Microsoft SQL Server 2014. I'm going to choose my SQL Server 2014 configuration manager. I'm going to choose my network configuration, choose my protocols for the Gallagher database. You can see TCP IP is disabled. So I'm going to change that to enabled. And one other thing I need to do is, is make sure that we're going to be working and operating on a particular port that we can use. So I'm going to say, uh, my, my, my dynamic ports, I'm going to remove that zero. So we're not going to use dynamic ports and we'll actually use the the correct SQL Server TCP port, which is uh, 1433. I'll make that change and it warns me that I will need to restart SQL Server. And I'll, I'll do that now. In fact, I can do it from, I can do it from here. So let me just do that from here. As I restart SQL Server, and I'll jump across to the um, production server and I'll make that same change. So protocols for Gallagher, TCP IP enabled, IP addresses and go down to where it says uh, IP all um, and make my change, to my port. And again, I'm going to restart the SQL service. Just going to wait for that. Um, production server to restart SQL server. Okay, and now back in the arc server RHA wizard, I'm just going to hit the, the back button and hit the next button again, and it's going to go and scan the SQL servers. Now you can see, we can see all the databases that are um, mounted on the production SQL server. We can see all of the, the system databases for SQL Server, and they're all installed in the default location for SQL Server um, 2014 Express Edition. And we have the, the Gallagher databases, which are installed on the E drive in the, in the location we chose to install the Gallagher command center software. Um, click Next to continue. Now, there are a whole lot of um, properties and variables that can be changed inside of our arc server RHA. There's things like um, email alert, notifications, uh, compression, um, point in time snapshots, data rewind, all sorts of things that can be customized in arc server RHA. I'm not intending on going through any of those in this particular video. I'm really just gonna accept the default settings. Um, and if you need to look into other details, then we can look at those um, at a later date. So I'm just really just going to continue down the wizard. Now this is uh, the switch over properties. So this is really a, 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 the opportunity to, to decide what happens in the event of a failover or switch over as ArcServe call it. You can see here we have an option of of network traffic redirection. So we have a few options. We have the option of moving the IP address. So if that means if we ha if we lose our production server, we can move the IP address to our target server, um, and obviously the services will stop and start ex accordingly. Um, now that doesn't work if you're going to a remote subnet, which um, we may find ourselves using in this scenario in this kind of scenario for the Gallagher command center. Um, if we're protecting two, a server in the same rack as the uh, as the DR server, then you could probably use uh, move IP. We also have redirect DNS. 
And this basically means if you're, have a, a, you have a production server that is, is on the network and users are accessing that, that production server, in the event of a, a failure, you want to fail over to a second server and you want to update DNS so the users will automatically reconnect to that second server. Now, in this scenario, I don't think that there's likely to be DNS servers involved in this kind of isolated bubble um, uh, disaster recovery scenario. So I'm going to deselect that. We also have this option to switch the computer name. Now, this is what we've prepared for. This is why I installed I, or I renamed the DR server to Gallagher one before installing the Gallagher software. This is what we're going to use. So basically, this means that when we initiate a switchover, this DR server is going to rename itself from Gallagher 2 to Gallagher 1, and then it will reboot. And when it comes back online, it will be, in every way, functionality-wise, Gallagher 1. And of course, the applications will run locally. Um, we have a couple of things here to, to, to just to look at, which is that the is alive timeout currently set to five minutes. That basically means that if the production server is down for five minutes, an alert will be triggered to say that there has been a failure, failure and a switchover is needed. And at that point, we will either alert the administrator that a failure has happened and you need to make a decision to fail over, or if automatic failover is configured, it will automatically fail over. I'm just going to leave the default for now. We then have some choices for our, our switch over. So in the event of a failover, a failure, do we want to switch over automatically? You know, which obviously that's on the, the uh, when we count down the five minutes, or do we want to switch over manually? I'm going to choose manually. That's the way I prefer to, to uh, configure these scenarios. Also, we've got the option for a reverse replication initiation. Now, this basically means is when we failed over, presumably at some point we want to come back. We want to reverse the protection and bring the data back to the original server. And this gives us the option to automatically start that reverse scenario. Again, I prefer to control these things manually, so I'm just going to select a manual um, initiation of that reverse procedure. Okay, we can see the scenario has been created and verified successfully. So we can hit next. We get a, a brief summary. We do have the option of running now, but like I said, this is we're protecting uh, the Gallagher command center. It's a custom application, effectively. It's not something ArcServe knows and understands. ArcServe knows and understands SQL Server, and that's what we've done. We've protected the SQL Server. So what I'll do is click Finish, and now I can go in and customize slightly the uh, scenario. So first of all, I'm going to choose to protect an additional folder. And I'm actually going to protect just the backups folder. So that basically means that if in the future our administrator runs a backup of the database running on Gallagher 1, it is going to store it in the backup folder and that will be replicated to the DR server. So we'll always have a copy on the DR server of the backups. Then I'm actually going to add in custom services that I want to control using the ArcServe RHA manager. Now, if I browse into it, I can see all, all of the services that are running on the production server. And if I scroll down, I can actually see the services relating to um, the Gallagher security system. Now, I've just literally selected these, these um, services and I have an option of setting the startup order if I wish to. I'll just scroll down to show you that we've already do have SQL servers already selected. That's already been selected and it's grayed out now by the scenario wizard. Now I can choose my startup order for these things. Now I'm assuming SQL server I want to start first. So I'll just leave that on number one and these others I'm just going to go through and assign numbers. I tell you the truth, I don't know if uh, it makes any difference setting any particular order on these particular servers, but I, I'll, I'll do that anyway, just to show it can be done. 
Okay, so now I've got my services selected. And these will be controlled by the scenario wizard. If I save my scenario now, and I'm now ready to actually run the scenario. So up at the top, I can hit the, the green button, which will actually start the um, the process, the um, replication, the synchronization of the data and get us into a position where we could actually do a failover. Again, we have an option of, of for our initial synchronization, uh, block level or file level or offline synchronization. In fact, we also have an option of skipping the synchronization if we absolutely know the data is the same. We're dealing with SQL Server here, so we'll always choose a block synchronization. If we just wait just a, a few seconds and the scenario will actually kick in. Okay, you can see here we, we have um, got some activity in the log files. We can see that SQL services have been started or they, they potentially already were running. And we started the block level um, synchronization. Now what's happened on this particular server, if I was to go into my uh, services here, and I'll just refresh, you'll, you'll see that SQL server has been stopped and I'll bring up my actual proper services. Um, you'll see that the Gallagher services have been set to manual. They have been stopped and their they startup type is manual uh, because they're going to be controlled by the, the failover process. So we can now return back to our RHA console and we can see we are uh, replicating, you can see replicating image indicating data is flowing from Gallagher 1 to Gallagher 2. Uh, we can look at the individual statistics. This is the uh, um, master server statistics. We can see um, we've, we've compared data and we've sent data and I think we are pretty much in sync now. Yes, so we're in sync. We can actually see that we're still replicating. So any changes being made to the databases on uh, Gallagher 1 are replicating across to Gallagher 2. Similarly, uh, or rather, we our DR server Gallagher 2 is also monitoring Gallagher 1 for uptime. And this is the default state for um, Arc Server RHA protection. It stays in this um, kind of state, continuously replicating data, and the DR server is continuously monitoring the production server for any kind of outage. Okay, I'm ready to. Uh, to simulate a failure of the production server uh, up at the production um, uh, Gallagher command center. Uh, just to, you know, show, have a look at something that we can actually observe running on the on the DR server once we've actually failed over. I want to just go into, um, I'll go into this Gallagher configuration client and, and I'll make, uh, make a change. So if I, if I say go into card holder one, you can see here, if I double click on this, I can maybe um, add some something in here and I'll just maybe put, uh, change card holder one to, I don't know, Nicholas G, that's me. And description, cloud ready solutions. Just, so I'm just going to update that. Now obviously that's going to be stored somewhere inside the in the database. Um, what I want to do now is quickly simulate a failure. What I'll do, I'll basically unplug the network card. I'm just going to um, go to change my adapter and I'm going to disconnect, disable the network card. Simple as that. So what's going to happen if I flick back to my ArcServe RHA console? This is a live monitor where Gallagher 2 is monitoring Gallagher 1. 
it's going to realize that Galaga 1 server is no longer available. It's no longer on the network. Now, it could have been a power outage or um, something more serious, but I've literally just unplugged or disabled the network card inside of Windows. So if we just wait a little while, we'll actually uh, see the um, is a live failure. So now you can see we can we have a message saying the connection to Gallagher one is lost and the is alive timeout will expire in 253 seconds. Now, if I'm sat here as administrator, I can see that and I can initiate a switch over immediately. Uh, or alternatively, if I wasn't here, I wasn't available, um, I wasn't watching this, when that countdown timer gets to zero, it would either send an alert to the administrators uh, or to management, or it could automatically begin the switchover process. So I, I'm not going to wait for that countdown to to um, get to zero. I'm going to initiate the switchover. So I'm going to click on the perform switchover button here. Now this is going to start do do make a few changes to the configuration on Galaga two. Okay, you can see now we have a couple of things here. We've got the uh, host name successfully switched to Gallagher 1. Okay, that's great. Um, the network traffic successfully redirected. That's what we actually asked it to, to do as part of the switchover process. Um, the next thing to happen will actually be a reboot of the, um, of the DR server. So we can see we've been unable to send the reboot command to the production server, but that's okay. Um, it, it, it's disconnected from the network. When it comes back on the network, it will receive that command and it will initiate its reboot. It will also be um, renamed. Okay, we can now see the message that Gallagher 2 will be rebooted now. Um, and again, once that reboot is completed, the switchover is complete. Okay, you can see the reboot process has begun. Okay, now I'll log back onto this. First of all, I will just bring up the server manager. We can see that the computer name is Gallagher 1, as we would expect. I'll launch the um, Gallagher configuration client. You can see that it is um, connecting. It's going to ask me to, to log in. So system and Okay, so I've logged in, and if I go and look in my, um, I guess, uh, the card holders, um, I can see the uh, the card holder one that I modified before. It's got my details in, and that was just before I pulled out the network card. Now, it may have been a few seconds, but typically it should be sub-second um, replication that we're dealing with. So we could have maybe made a change and immediately pulled out the network card rather than waiting a few seconds. Um, so that is a successful um, failover from the Gallagher 1 to Gallagher 2. Now, what would happen if we want to bring back, um, go back to the production server? So whatever issue has been encountered um, on the production side of thing has been resolved. And let's, let's just actually do that. Let's enable the network card.
And while that's enabled, I'm just going to uh, launch the ArcServe uh, um, console again. Okay, and launch the scenario management. Okay, I just had a little outage with the video recording, but what happened, um, as you can see, the uh, arcs of RHA manager uh, reconnected to the original, if I look in the logs here, managed to uh, reconnect to the production server. And I went through a process of stopping the services on that production server and renamed the, the, Galaga, the original Galaga 1 server to Galaga 1 RHA in effectively making that particular server inactive and then initiated a reboot. So the Galaga, original Galaga 1 server has now been rebooted and is actually called Galaga 1-RHA. So what we might want to do is, uh, first of all, log on to uh, Galaga 1-RHA. And again, I'll make another change because let's suggest that we uh, want to bring everything back. So I'm just going to modify card holder two, and I'll give first name of Kelly, and I'll just uh, make that change. Just a very small change. Um, now, as as our original production server is online and where our scenario has connected, we can um, initiate the scenario again, and this is actually going to create what's what we call a backward scenario. It's going back from DR back to the original production server. Okay, it just gives a warning about the services being set to manual startup, but that's okay because our scenario is going to manage the startup of the services. And again, we'll choose block synchronization, which is going to compare the blocks that already exist on the uh, original server with the blocks that exist on our active DR server. Okay, you can see the uh, replication now is going in the opposite direction. Um, still called Galaga 2 as far as the active can serve. You can consider those names as being a label that's stuck on the on the effective on the piece of tin that we're protecting so that the label doesn't change it's just the the windows identity changes and we're already in sync and we are ready now this is what we call a a, a fail back a switch back if you like from dr to production so this can be done gracefully i don't need to unplug the network cable um, to initiate this switch back. I can just use the switch over, um, perform switch over button and initiate the process. This is actually going to do a nice graceful shutdown of the SQL databases. Um, it will continue to replicate those nice, uh, nicely shut down databases and will obviously start them up nice and uh, clean. And of course, it will be followed by a reboot of both servers. So the original production server will be renamed from Galaga-RHA back to Galaga 1 and the DR server will be renamed from Galaga 2 back to, sorry from Galaga 1 back to Galaga 2. Once that's complete we'll be able to, be able to initiate the protection again. So we can already see um, Galaga 1 will be rebooted and Galaga 2 will be rebooted. So both servers are now scheduled to be rebooted. You see both servers restarting simultaneously. Um, and again, they, they're going to come up now with their original server names. And of course, uh, the uh, Gallagher command center will be running back on the original server.
okay I can log on to my original uh, production server okay and again I can uh, just quickly launch that configuration client Watch the DR server takes a lot longer to reboot um, in this environment it's a lower spec box but I'm just going to log on here and You got the password right that time, yeah. And just quickly look at my card holders, and of course, I'll be able to expect to see uh, both Nicholas and Kelly listed as you would expect. Now, the DR server is back online, so the final um, step in the process, because I, I did um, specify I wanted to control things manually when I created the scenario. Let's try that again. So the last um, thing to do is actually to launch the arcs of RHA overview page. And I'm just going to start the protection again. And again, that's purely because I, I configured uh, the the protection to be uh, controlled manually at all times. That concludes the demonstration of how to protect the uh, Gallagher Command Center using ArcServe RHA. Thank you for watching.